Please welcome Inbal Shani. Good morning, universe! Welcome to day two. Although if you're like me, every day feels like day one. <laughs> Raise your hand if this is the first time you've been here with us in universe. Amazing, so many new faces, welcome. I hope you're having fun. Now, raise your hand if, this is, if you've been here with us in 2022. Nice, welcome back. So last year, I was sitting where you're all sitting today. It was one week before my journey with GitHub started. I was looking all around, and I was so amazed by our GitHub community and how amazing you all are. I'm here with you today, celebrating my first year here in GitHub. And I couldn't be more excited by all the things that you have achieved on our platform. I have been a developer my entire career, and I know what it takes to do your job. You have to love and build. You have to love and experiment. And you have to think beyond today. I know for me, I've always wanted to explore and see what was possible. So I started my career as an applied scientist, and I built avionics systems in the aerospace industry. Ever since then, I worked in the aerospace industry, in the automotive industry. I built self-driving cars and robots. I tuned models and domains in NLP. I developed web and app. And most recently in AWS, I had a chance to grow cloud and modern compute and containers focusing on developer experience. One thing I'm convicted about, developer happiness and developer productivity strongly depend on dev tools and dev environment. From writing embedded software to the infinite resources of the cloud, how you get your work done is critical for your success. So I made it my mission to build the best developer tools in the market to help build the GitHub platform to empower each and every one of you to be at the center of innovation. So we're here today talking about my passion and our platform mission, one that requires mindset around value and what matter most. This morning, you will hear how we're going to talk about GitHub and enabling you and your organization to place developer experience at the center of human progress. There are three ways that we're enabling you. One, because developer experience is foundational to innovation. We focus on optimizing all aspects of developer experience so you can deliver even more meaningful value. Second, tomorrow's businesses will require a fundamentally different approach to development. We're helping you prioritize the developer experience throughout the software development lifecycle, across any environment and any organization. And third, we're enabling the next generation of skill set and education, focusing on open source, education, and enterprise communities. So you will be ready to staff and build on the systems of tomorrow. Let's start with our commitment to developer experience. As you've heard yesterday, GitHub is the world's most trusted and adopted AI-powered developer platform, empowering organizations to unlock innovation at scale. We are fundamentally changing software development. For us, AI is foundational across the entire software development lifecycle, where we are focusing on meeting developer needs, your needs, at every second in the development process, meeting you where you are and when you are. The benefits of AI-powered developer experience are infinite. An efficient workflow on our platform isn't just a business asset. It is a catalyst for developer happiness and ultimately solution to the world's toughest problem. And now, you're going to hear more about how GitHub is raising the bar on developer experience. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to day two of Universe. Woo! 
I am super thrilled to be back with all of you on day two and even more thrilled to be able to talk about something that I am personally very passionate about, and that's developer experience. Typically, I've seen this phrase mean different things to different people, but for me personally, it really means keeping all of us as developers in the zone, in our flow state, by doing three things. Number one, having best-in-class collaboration experiences so you can collaborate with your team no matter where they're at. Number two, embedding security right into the developer workflow so you can ship secure code from the start. And number three, helping all of us as developers go from idea to production as quickly as possible. So let's dive into each of these in more detail. We know that millions of you are working hard to ensure better collaboration for your teams that are likely spread across the world. GitHub suite of collaboration features, including pull requests, issues, and discussions, make it easier to manage complex projects so that you can scale no matter how distributed your team is. And at every step of the way to achieving your goals, whether they're big or small, GitHub's built-in project planning and tracking tools help you quickly collaborate and prioritize activities so you can stay on track and hit your milestones. Now, of course, all of these collaboration features are there for you, no matter what language, framework, or deployment platform you choose to use. In fact, because at GitHub we're not only cloud and platform neutral, we are dedicated to being the home for you and all developers from all walks of life and experiences. So you can be rest assured that no matter what you choose to build next, we will always have the broad support of tools, languages, and deployment platforms that you need. Secondly, to maximize your developer experience, we bake in security into the developer workflow with GitHub Advanced Security, so you can protect what you build and ship secure software right from the start. Now, unlike traditional application security solutions, GitHub Advanced Security makes it easy for developers to identify and fix vulnerabilities without leaving your flow state. So what does this really translate to in the real world? Well, by embedding security into the developer workflow with GitHub, developers like yourselves all over the world fixed security vulnerabilities more than seven times faster than the industry average. And you all did it at scale. This year alone, you fixed 32 million security issues. Bravo to all of you. That is something for you to be super proud of. And you did that by using GitHub Advanced Security's core features of code scanning, secret scanning, and supply chain security. So let's briefly look at each of these capabilities. With code scanning, you are empowered to prevent vulnerabilities in your code with automatic security checks and remediation guidance right in your pull request. And now, with the power of AI, code scanning is scaling your ability to fix vulnerabilities by suggesting AI-powered code fixes for you. I cannot wait for you to try out this feature. But we didn't stop there. You've been telling us what you needed, and we listened. We know some of the costliest security exploits in the past year came from leaked secrets. And it's challenging to prevent this. With secret scanning, you can seamlessly prevent secrets exposures of more than 200 token types across all of GitHub. And yes, that includes comments, discussions, and other text fields that are outside of your code. I mean, because we all know that code is not the only place that secrets get leaked. And as Thomas showed you yesterday, we're giving secret scanning a bit of an AI boost as well. So now you can accurately prevent the exposure of unstructured secrets like passwords and more easily build custom secret patterns to detect secrets that are unique to your organization. 
On top of all of this, we know that the safety of your applications relies on your ability to safely use open source. And this requires visibility, detection, and remediation help. And this is exactly why we've enabled dependency scanning available cost-free to open source communities so we can secure the world software together. But the key here is we don't just tell you if you have a problem. By using Dep Dependabot, we also automatically provide a possible solution so your team can stay up to date with security updates and remediate faster. You get the built-in advantage that Dependabot alerts are powered by our own advisory database, which is not only professionally curated by the GitHub Security Lab, but thanks to our special relationship with the open source community and our role as the largest independent issuer of CVEs, you get alerted much faster and with a lot more context. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and don't worry, security teams. We are dedicated to helping you optimize your security program and your security posture on GitHub as well. I completely get how difficult it is to understand your security posture across thousands of repositories and a growing number of those repositories. And so today, we have new security overview dashboards that enable precise and effective prioritization so you can manage security risks, ensure compliance, and retain the trust of your customers. Now, building on supercharging collaboration and <coughs> embedding security into your workflow, the third part of helping you go from idea to production in minutes is supporting you with the right solutions to help you scale, automate, and stay in your flow state. So developers, I know you all can relate. Context switching is the absolute worst. It is mentally and emotionally draining, but it's too often our reality. A recent study found that it takes 23 minutes of uninterrupted focus time until a game developer hits their flow state where they can do actual and real coding. And while well, it takes me way longer, but I will spare you guys those details. But really, our goal is to make it seamless for you to stay in your flow state from the start. And that starts with your development environment. With GitHub Codespaces, you have an instant environment to code, run, test, debug, and more, all without having to set up a local machine. This makes it easy to quickly review and test that pull request that your colleague needs so urgently without interfering with your own current work. And now that you have all your work, your creativity captured in your code base, you want to get it out there. And hence, with GitHub Actions, it's easy to build and deploy your application to your target environment without having to spend days to acquire, set up, and maintain infrastructure to host your own CI-CD solution. And as the leading CI-CD solution on the planet, GitHub Actions also supports you with a fantastic community that has over 20,000 actions in the marketplace. This helps you automate all aspects of your developer workflow ultimately letting you reduce your cognitive load and streamline your team's processes. When you're automating everything, we know that scale is critical to helping you meet your goals. While GitHub Actions can run on your own machines, we've seen the ease, the flexibility, and the scalability of our hosted runners grow more and more popular. So we have invested in extending your options with our hosted runner fleet. Now, on top of the standard hosted runners for Linux, Windows, and Mac OS, this year, we also made larger hosted runners available for you to purchase. And we've been busy adding machine types to our larger hosted runner pool. Our new GPU-based machines enable graphic and machine learning workloads, giving you instant access to one of the most in-demand hardware types in our industry right now. And I'm super excited to announce 
that our ho new hosted runners for dedicated ARM-based hardware will now give you physical access to our latest ARM instruction sets, meaning faster builds for software targeting ARM devices, along with the confidence of being able to validate your builds on real ARM hardware. Yeah. This will be broadly available for you, for you to use in 2024, so stay tuned. And last but not least, we have heard you loud and clear when you've said that you need to build and test on Apple Silicon. So today, I am pleased to announce that you can get access to our new M1 Mac OS larger hosted runners that are all GPU enabled by default. Now, we've been using the new M1 larger runners to build and test our native mobile application and saw our build times reduce from 42 minutes to 23 minutes. Now, those are the results that we really strive for. But building out all of the infrastructure to support these new larger hosted runners is no small feat for our engineering teams. So we wanted to give you a little bit of a sneak peek into how they do it. Christina here from GitHub, and this looks like an unassuming office park. But inside is something very, very cool, and that is where we are building the racks for brand new M1 macOS runners. This has been a long time coming. Um, I know that people have been wanting the Apple Silicon runners for a long time. These M1 runners are so much faster. Our team is working hard behind the lines to reduce the time to bring the latest chipsets and OSs to our customers. Come, let's go check them out. This is a test rack. You can see all these tags, they're being tested before they're ready for production. And then behind us is a finished rack. So it's getting ready to be boxed up and shipped into our data center where it's pretty much, you know, plug and play. So this is where it starts. Your Mac Mini. I have a few of these at home. I have a few of these on in my closet. But have you wondered what's on the inside? So here are the fans. See, this is where the power goes. This is the custom networking board that our windows are both for us. And these all go in here, these splits. Like, yeah, you can top one off, pop it back in, makes it really easy to debug. And there are 10 of these here. Exactly. So totally 60 in a rack. Yeah. 60. Very cool. So by the time we watch this, it's possible that if you're running a GitHub action on a Mac OS in one runner, it could be for one of these. Yeah, your job might literally be running in one of these machines in the sled. Yes. Please welcome Shuba Rao. Good morning, universe. It's, uh, it's exciting for me to see GitHub is bringing innovation to providing developers with the best experience ever to get to the flow state. But we also deeply care about developers within large organizations, the ones who take on the task of managing tooling or platform infrastructure or just GitHub administration. Raise your hand if that's you. Thank you for being here. As your strategic partner, we are committed to enabling you to bring GitHub innovation to your organization in a secure, easy to manage, and a compliant manner. And the first step to managing that, the first step to adopting all of that is to adopt GitHub. And migrating your entire development environment is going to be hard, but we are committed to helping you make it easier. And that's why we are excited to bring migration tooling generally available now for Bitbucket and for Azure DevOps. <laughs> With our tools, you can bring your data and workflows to GitHub. It's now even easier to leverage the productivity, the security, and the AI features that you just heard about from GitHub Platform so that your teams can build together. Once in a single working environment, ensuring consistency across your teams while making it easy to collaborate is key. So let's now look into the compliance controls that we are implementing for organizations, repositories, and users. It can be very difficult for administrators to manage their entire GitHub footprint, especially if you started with multiple organizations and teams. And we bring all the controls required together in what we call enterprise accounts, which now has expanded customer coverage. With a centralized enterprise account, you have a single point of visibility 
and you can enforce policies for across your organizations. Let's now look at how to manage users. Many of you want to automate user onboarding and offboarding using your identity providers. And two years ago, we launched support for using your IDPs to manage and create GitHub user accounts. And we call this enterprise managed users, or more affectionately, EMUs. <laughs> EMUs started with support for Okta and Azure Active Directory. And we are actively expanding coverage for that. So we recently GA'd uh, Pink Federate Identity Connector support. And this universe, we are bringing broader support for a larger set of IDPs by providing support for SCIM APIs. And, and now you can use any IDP of your choice with GitHub. Now, once you have users, you can customize their access and, uh, with granular permissions. You can now create granular access permissions in your roles in your organizations and use them in assigning permissions for repositories. And if you wanted to give restricted access to users outside your organization, for example, when you work with them on special projects, you can now do it by uh, creating guest collaborators within your private organizations. So more and more developers are using and switching between enterprise identity and a personal account while using GitHub. And starting today, you can use account switch right in github.com to easily switch between your, uh, to contribute both to uh, open source and to your internal repository. So we looked at uh, organizations and users. Let's now look into how to manage repositories. We are bringing the ability to attach key value metadata to each repository, and we call this custom properties. These custom properties can be used to enforce certain requirements across your repos. Uh, and we are pleased to introduce general availability of repository rules. So. Uh, these rules allow your teams to create and manage branch protection. That's controlling when your code can be merged into main or when, when it can be deployed. So this release also introduces a new rule that allows you to examine commit messages and make sure that teams are all documenting change consistently across your organization. With these, we are enabling you to do compliance at scale throughout your organizations. In its beta period, it was already very popular with uh, open source repositories. We see that more than one in five open source repositories are already using these. So it's not just GitHub Enterprise Cloud that gets all the love. We are also bringing that and making it easier uh, for you to manage your own GitHub Enterprise server. So in our most recent release, that's 3.10, we brought new features such as projects in GA, deployment protection rules, and find grain personal access tokens. And I'm pleased to say that we've been speeding up the cadence of bringing new features into GitHub Enterprise Server with quarterly releases. In the coming days, you'll be seeing the release candidate of GitHub Enterprise Server 3.11 available. And in that, we are bringing features such as the rule sets, one-click code, ca code scanning setup, and also new CLI for management. And now, let's see what's coming into GitHub Copilot. We know that many of your organizations are uh, working across concerns related to how you use generative AI in your tooling. And to address this, we are bringing new policies and features to make it easier for you. And many of them include IP indemnity protection. This is backed by the Microsoft Copilot copyright commitment. A public code filter to make sure that uh, Copilot cannot suggest, uh, make suggestions that match public code repos. A security vulnerability filter that prevents incorrect and uh, insecure coding patterns from being used in suggestions. And lastly, launching today is content exclusions. So these features, the content exclusion enables you to prevent certain files and repositories from being used in doing the suggestion generation by Copilot. So with these features, you can leverage the power of AI without giving up on the governance and policy requirements of your organizations. So with all this, we are seeing an explosion of innovation not just in open source projects, not just in private repos, but also in repositories that are using generative AI. And now, let's show you some of our amazing customers and how they're using it. Welcome to Canada, Argentina, Germany, the Netherlands, Bangalore, India, and the United States. We spent time with customers around the world 
to see how GitHub's platform helps to accelerate innovation and improve the developer experience. We all know that happy developers build happy products. And what makes developers happy is when the flow is very easy and it's easy to do the right thing. This year, we've had over 3 million GitHub Actions executed. If each of those actions saved a developer a minute, then we've achieved 16 million in cost avoidance. I have definitely felt improvements of around 50% in iteration time with GitHub Copilot is writing your first comment and then having the autocomplete system write the entire script was quite an amazing experience. GitHub is a very integral partner to what we are doing at Infosys. So when I very first time used GitHub Copilot, I was amazed and surprised. It basically solves majority of my day-to-day -day problem because Copilot helps to generate code and it helps me to accelerate my software development and productivity, not only for me, for my engineering team. Over 60% of our engineering function is regularly using Copilot to develop faster. That means what they were working on can happen sooner, it can happen more easily. What gets me most excited with GitHub is that you can try out new stuff every day. We can communicate with each other, see each other's code. This means that we can develop much faster and iterate more. Using GitHub Advanced Security, we make sure that every line of code is secure and ready to go to production. Before GitHub, we had a lot of different version control systems across multiple companies, and all of them were siloed. What we did with GitHub is we managed to get everyone within one version control system, but also a developer platform that allowed us to collaborate together more effectively. Because GitHub is this open place where you have both open source stuff, but you also have companies running on it, most developers are familiar with it. That is for us a huge advantage because we do not have to explain GitHub itself. We can concentrate on the stuff that we do with that. I strongly believe that our pace of innovation is going to rapidly increase due to our partnership with GitHub. Thanks to GitHub and to you, our customers are experiencing increased collaboration, generating secure code, increasing productivity, and creating developer happiness. Let's build from here. Please welcome Inbal Shani and Jer McMahon. Hey, Hello, Jer. Inbal, how are welcome you doing? to Universe. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. And how, how are, are you? How are you enjoying Universe so far? Um, it's actually fantastic. I think I heard of something called Copilot. Oh, yeah, that yeah, thing. Uh, <laughs> seems pretty interesting. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. So I asked Jer to join us today to talk about Fidelity's amazing transformation journey in adopting GitHub throughout the software development lifecycle. So maybe to kickstart, Jer, tell us about your role in Fidelity and what's the team that you're leading. Yeah, um, so everyone, my name is Jer McMahon from Fidelity Investments, and I lead up what a group we call ALM Tools and Platforms. So we manage all of the SDLC tools that developers use every day to you know, ideate, to create, and ultimately deliver you know, what our customers want and beautiful solutions, services, and products. So that's my role, and um, we try to create delightful customers. Yeah, and, and you mentioned that you helped do the transformation for GitHub in our conversation before. Throughout the software development lifecycle, where you've introduced security tools, also AI tools. Can you walk us through how Fidelity is adopting GitHub across the development lifecycle? Yeah, so when we look at, you know, when you go back to traditional data centers, you have all this networking, you have all this, per, you know, they, it provides the boundaries where people can develop safe, you know, there might have been in more waterfall development methods. So we've looked as we've modernized, as part of our cloud transformation, we've also tried to modernize the development process. So we've really transformed it. So how do we allow teams focus or developers focus on the business value and reduce the amount of time they're spending on getting their applications into production, you know, going through all this, this, whether it's a review or a security process or a scan, and just reduce that all on so the platform can take care of that on their behalf. Amazing. And we talked a little bit about the thing that is called Copilot, you know, generative AI. Not a big hype right now, but you were one of the early adopters. Would you mind sharing with the audience here? What were your learnings and how did you went about it? Yeah, so it's like, you know, like every developer, right? It's the real cool tool. You get into it. It's so exciting. And your, your, and your imagination just starts running wild. Um, so, you know, so, but how do we bring it back to, it, it is an, a, a tool that helps enable us write better software. 
you know, it allows us to create software that our customers want to use and, and put their hands on. So it's really, really important that we help the teams focus on what our customers touch, you know, so they're happy customers. And then, you know, Copilot then can help with other things under the covers. So, you know, from simple things like how do you create something within our standard, right? So how does it learn from the context? And how does it say, hey, create the Fidelity API, for example. Right. So we can actually bootstrap things that have already got our best practices and our standards already inbuilt in. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're really focused on is helping the developer accelerate, but also helping to, for them to create in a way that it complies with our blueprints and our policies. Right, and, and when you start, we heard from some of our customers, some of them are wow because it's written software in the speed of their own mind, but for you, when you went through the adoption of Copilot, did you encounter any challenges, any pushback, or what was the reaction for the developers? So, well, not so much from developers. I think they really want to use it. it. It's kind of, we worked day one, so when we started off looking at bringing in Copilot, the first people I started with was our cybersecurity team, our enterprise technology and risk team, mm -hmm. and our legal team. So not the, the most funnest people who might want to, to, um, <laughs> yes. to adopt this product, but they were the real people we needed to convince. I think developers are already convinced, right? They, right. You know, they're you know, talking about generative AI. We, we, see, we see that everywhere in the world, you know, in our day jobs and in your workplace. So it was really making them comfortable, bringing them along on a journey, what it is, and actually doing you know, showing them. So I actually sat down and I actually demoed it to them and actually, and then we talked through how the workflow went, what was the request process, where the data lived, where it didn't live. And it, it was just really important to make them comfortable with how it works. So, and then, and then it was just, once we were comfortable there, then it's to bring the developers on board. Right, and, and we heard from some of the customers that sometimes it's a bottom up, like the request will come from software developers, sometimes it's a top down. Anything you want to share with the audience in terms of advice, how you went through this transformation, not just Copilot, but fully standardized on GitHub across for software development lifecycle? Yes, the first thing we did, well, in, in Copilot in particular, the first thing we did was we just ran a playground exercise. So we, we, have a, we had a number of licenses and we just gave it to developers to, to play with. Right. There was no real requirements on them, and it was just generally to get feedback. Um, we're currently in the middle of a second one of them, but we're actually doing very specific um, experiments, mm -hmm. very specific test cases. So to get, a, to get on to, into the program, you must have a set of use cases, a set of test cases. So we, will, we really want to see how our customers can benefit from bringing this, a tool like Copilot into the organization. And then other, in other parts of the platform where we look at it is like Copilot allows, we, we heard it allows you go, Gen AI allows you go faster. Right. right? It accelerates the development process but we know from writing code, to get that into production, there's a number of stages and steps and things along the way. So if you're going faster in the left side of the house and you've got all this friction and all these other things and along the way to get it into production, right. you know, are you just meeting that friction faster? Yeah. So we've really focused on the platform and you know, some of the cool yeah. announcements this morning which make me happier than Copilot is how do we automate all of that policy, how do we automate that so as developers we can support them going as fast as they want, but without them tripping over. Well, we're always happy to make our customers happy, <laughs> so thank you for yeah. saying that. Also, you and I, went in our previous conversation, we chat about kind of the, the next generation of software development and how the industry is going to react and behave after the revolution of AI, generalized AI, uh, bringing more and more software development, bringing more AI across the software development lifecycle. Anything you want to talk about? Yeah, so it's, um, you know, I think it's just part of our lives. And I think it's, you know, it's funny, I've got, um, I got four daughters, a couple of them work in, or in university doing computer science, and it's part of their curriculum, right? It's, it's how they're using, it's, it's how they're going to grow up, yeah. and it's how they're going to, when they come into the, in, into the workplace, it's just going to be a tool. Yeah. Um, and they're so, so comfortable in using these. So I think it's, you know, like, how do we do security, right? So being able to, you know, you, there's a vulnerability, you know, and we, we saw yesterday about the ability now for Copilot to help us, you know, open the PR with the recommended fix mm -hmm. versus a developer spending hours, maybe or minutes, you know, depending how good their Google skills are, what's right. the CVE, what's the right version to upgrade it, is that, is, is that all good? And so bringing that in where we can to help us um, get faster to, to, to a good outcome. Yeah. Well I, I'm going to throw at you a question. Uh, a few weeks back, I was asked, what will be a, the best advice that you can give a student that is currently going through computer science or computer engineering or even applied math? 
Um, what, are they sh what they should think about is they're going through their university career, are there other things that it will be good for them to focus outside their normal courses? The normal courses, yeah, yeah. I think it's, um, it, it's understanding. At the, at the end of the day, we write codes to deliver products and services, and, you know, and it's, it's a craft, right? And I think about it as, you know, if, if there's a, an engineer and they're designing a beautiful building, they're looking at that. So I think it's, it's really critical that they, under, they think about their craft, think about the products and services, and the outcomes they're delivering for the customers. Mm -hmm. It's not tech for tech. Right. It's actually delivering things, you know, that people use in their everyday lives. Right. Um, so I think it's making sure they understand the business, understanding the customer, um, you know, having fun, you know, with this. It's you know, we, we work a lot of our lives, so it's, it's really really important to have fun with it. And it's collaboration, right? I think right. you know we're you know we're, as we get involved with the open source community, you learn from others, um, you collaborate with others, you just learn a huge amount um, through working collaborating with others. So. I think that's, you know, getting involved in open source projects or getting involved in community-based projects, right. I think is a fantastic way, not just to learn of the skill itself, but also how to work with other people. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your amazing transformation mm. journey for Fidelity and for all the advice that you have given our audience here today. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Please welcome Stormy Peters. To build a brighter future, we all need to invest today. Take a look at your favorite open source software projects and ask yourself, how much are they worth to you? What can you do to support them? either through code, documentation, raising awareness, or providing funding? What can you do to make our community a welcoming place for everyone? Because open source software should be available to everyone. And it's important that we make sure that everyone is included in that future. GitHub Actions is the number one CICD engine powering the world of development. And that goes for open source software, too. Just in the last 12 months, we have provided over 7 billion minutes of build time for free to open source software projects on GitHub. But that's not enough. As the home for open source, we need to help more support reach the open source software community. That's why we launched GitHub Sponsors. GitHub Sponsors allows individuals and companies to invest in the open source software they depend on and want to support. In April this year, we made organization-funded sponsorships available to all. And while we've been busy building, you've been busy investing. More than 4,200 organizations now use GitHub Sponsors to fund open source. Thank you on behalf of all the maintainers that you support. While many of our developers are funded directly through GitHub sponsors, in order to support multi-person projects, some open source projects are activated with our partner, Open Collective, to help distribute the investment among all of the maintainers. Individual developers and, influ and influencers also wanted more models of funding, including freemium models, where greater support can open up new levels of access and benefits. So we added GitHub private repos to GitHub sponsors, meaning that maintainers can provide additional value to those companies that are sponsoring them. And now we are partnering with Patreon to provide additional funding opportunities for developers on GitHub, and we'll continue to add new partners. With the new Patreon integration, you can link your GitHub and Patreon accounts to recognize and reward the people who support your work. We also recently announced that we have welcomed an additional 35 new regions from around the globe. With this expansion, GitHub Sponsors is now available in 103 regions. That means people around the world can receive benefit for their open source software work. 
I've spent my career focused on how to make open source available to everyone. While I've been incredibly privileged to have companies support me in doing that, this has only been an option available to a few until now. GitHub is truly making tooling more available so that enterprises can see across their open source software dependencies and the maintainers that it, whose work they depend on. At the same time, we're focused on expanding the number of people who can afford to invest their time in the open source software community. To help people turn their open source ideas into open source businesses, we launched GitHub Accelerator. Last year, we invested $400,000 into these projects to give them the space and resources to decide if taking their project and turning it into a company would make sense for them. I'm pleased to say that this was such a success that we will be launching a new and second round of GitHub Accelerator. Coming in early 2024, we'll be bringing the next group of projects and companies together to learn from each other and from the best in the industry about building sustainable business models around open source software projects. Not only will we bring the people together for this cha life changing program, we will be, we will be providing um, over $400,000 of investment to those projects to allow them to decide how they want to grow. To build a brighter future, we all need to invest in today. At GitHub, we're investing heavily to make a better developer experience. To do that, we need to make sure that the best tools are available to the next generation of software engineers and their teachers. That's why in 2014, we launched the GitHub Student Pack. And today, we have GitHub Education. I believe there's some GitHub education folks in the house. We have some students. <laughs> if you see them around in red hoodies, please say hi. More than 5 million learners have made their start in programming with GitHub education. Over 80 partners provide free and discounted tooling to GitHub teachers and students through GitHub education and the GitHub student and teacher packs. We help teachers to build, share, and mark assignments with GitHub Classroom. Universities around the world are taking advantage of GitHub code spaces and GitHub Actions to get their learners up and running quickly with fully containerized development environments in the cloud. This enables learning for many that previously had no access to a powerful development environment. The developer experience of the future is undoubtedly going to be powered by AI. And we've all seen the benefits of GitHub Copilot in helping you learn new languages and new libraries. But just like when the calculator was introduced, it's important that students learn when AI can assist their productivity and how to use it as a tutor, not just providing the answer, but teaching them how to code. With AI tools, education has changed. And we need to help people understand the right way to use these powerful new tools. That's why we've made GitHub Copilot free for teachers, students, and maintainers of the most popular open source software projects. Since we've launched GitHub Copilot, more than half a million teachers, students, and open source software maintainers have taken advantage of the best AI tooling for free. This is all part of our commitment as the home for all developers so that every single one of you can continue to innovate towards human progress. Thank you. And let's watch a story about what's possible when we include everybody. My name is Becky. I started playing video games when I was three. I gaze technology allows me to control the software interfaces, and it means that this is one of the few things I can do totally independently. We still have the majority of designers and programmers as young, fit, non-disabled men. 
and in order to produce more inclusive technology we need people who have an understanding of the diversity of what it means to be human my mine was built as a fork of the OptiKey project, which is written by a guy called Julius Sweetland, published to GitHub. We're not going to return anything, so that's a void. OK, are you happy with what's happening in this method now? Good. Brilliant. Let's make this commit here, and then we'll push it to GitHub, OK? I am now coding some new mods myself to be incorporated into the iMine interface in the future. I am loving it. It makes me feel valued and respected. Analua shows that it is possible to overcome the barriers of disability and achieve at the top levels of academia. It helped me to realize what I could potentially achieve in a workplace and it gave me a way to give something back to the disabled gaming community. It has been amazing, and it has allowed me to show the world just what someone with severe disabilities can achieve. I hope to open up many more opportunities for disabled people in the world of gaming and communication. Wow. Thank you, Becky. Thank you for sharing your incredible journey, your incredible story with all of us. It strongly reminds us on why we're all here, how our GitHub community is enabling more builders like you to bring your gifts to the world. We're incredibly proud of our one platform that makes such a difference to any community to any enterprise, no matter where you are with your journey, modernizing, shifting left, or doing away with technical debt. We all want to make an impact. We're all here to make an impact. We believe that GitHub is your platform and your partner at every second of the development lifecycle. You know, while our peers are putting AI in their offering as wrappers, we believe that our platform is fundamentally changing the way we all innovate. Or the way I like to think about our community, one platform for 100 million users. There are three ways that we're enabling. First, because developer experience is foundational to innovation, we're focusing on optimizing all aspects of developer experience to help equip you and your organization to succeed. Second, because tomorrow's businesses are going to need fundamentally different approach than today, one that prioritizes the developer experience throughout the software development lifecycle across any environment inside an organization. And third, we're enabling the next generation of skill set across open source, education, and enterprise community. So you will be ready to staff and build for the systems of tomorrow. When we opened this conversation today, I talked about my own ambition to make an impact. I looked everywhere. I looked to infrastructure, and I looked to the skies. I decided that the best way to scale what I know about building is that it takes a team. So I want to say thank you. Thank you, developers. Thank you, students. And thank you, leaders, for all the risk that you take and all the ideas that you pursue on our platform. Enjoy the rest of the universe. And I will channel my inner Thomas and say one last thing. See you next year. <laughs>